final type of looping structure that we're going to see in this unit. It's called a do loop. Um, the flow chart looks quite a bit different than the flow charts for the while loop or the uh, for loop that we saw yesterday. Um, primarily what we notice right away that's different is that the first thing that is executed is the statement. That is the body of the loop is executed first. That means it will always run at least once. After the body has executed, then we evaluate the condition. If that condition evaluates to true, we go back and we run the body again, and so on and so forth until the condition evaluates to false, and we continue with whatever code is after the do loop. The syntax for this involves the do keyword, probably not a big surprise. It also involves the while keyword. And so I often refer to this as a do while loop because it reminds me not to forget the while part, okay? Um, so let's look at what this looks like in code. We're gonna go back into the same class where we've been and we're gonna write another method to print the numbers one, two, three, four, five, just like we did with a while loop and just like we did with a for loop but now so we can see it with the do loop. So public static void do example. And this will be our do loop or do while loop. That name works a little bit better for me. So here's how it behaves. We first, first it executes the body of the loop. That's different. Second, it evaluates the condition. So even though the condition is evaluated after the body is executed at least once, the condition part is still the same as a while loop. If true, it executes the body of the loop again. And if false, it continues execution after the loop. So let's see what it looks like from a syntax perspective. We still need a local variable. I'm gonna say int count equals one, just like we did with the while loop. And over here, I'll label that initialization like we've been doing. And then I use the do keyword, but there are no parentheses after it. I immediately follow by curly brackets. So I say do, I've got my curly brackets that define the body of the loop. And here's where I'm going to put system.out.println count. And I'm going to label this as the body. Much like the while loop, I still need to increment count. That's where we update the loop variable. So even though we start with just the do, the, the body of the loop is identical to that of the while loop. And then the reason why I call it a while loop um, and what the compiler is complaining about right now is that while is expected. After the block, we have to say while, and then we have our parentheses with the condition inside it. And we end it with a semicolon. That's the condition part. And then we can print done. So it's very similar to a while loop, except we basically just moved the while condition to the end of the loop instead of the beginning of the loop. And as a result, we've guaranteed that the body of the loop is gonna run at least once. One question or a series of questions that you might start to be having is like, okay, great. I've now learned a while loop, a for loop, and now a do while loop. Why would I use one over the other? Or when do I use these different ones? And that's something that we're going to kind of fill in over the next several days as we get more experience with these. Um, but to start to answer that question when it comes to while loops versus do while loops, um, really it comes down to, do you know the loop is going to run exactly once. I'm sorry, not exactly once. Do you know the loop is going to run at least once? If so, it might make more sense um, to use a do while loop rather than a while loop. 
Often we use the do while loop when we're dealing with user input. Like we're asking the user to enter a series of numbers because we know they're going to type in at least one. And so our code can be a little bit clearer and we can have less like fake values to make things work if we just use a do while loop. And we're going to write an example like that in just a moment. So that's one example of when we do a do while loop. Um, in general, when it comes to for loops versus while loops, we're going to see some specific recommendations later today. Um, but the most general recommendation I can give to you is if you know how many times the loop is going to run, a for loop is a better bet. For loops are great and, and easier to code once we get used to the syntax of having it run a certain fixed number of times. Um, if it's not determinable how many times your loop is going to run and it depends upon some other external factor, often a while loop ends up being cleaner code. You can always write your code either way. There's nothing you can do with a while loop that you can't do with a for loop and vice versa. It's just about what is the easiest for you and other people to read. That's what we're going for. Ooh, that's, that's a great question. On the exam, do I ever force you to use one or the other? I do, yeah. Sometimes I tell you which one I want because I want to make sure you can do both types. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep, so, but sometimes I do explicitly say, I want a for loop because I want to make sure you can write a for loop. Of course. All right, let's write an example with user input so we can see a, an application of this do while loop. Um, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be, actually, this is kind of like our first algorithm. It's a very simple algorithm. We're going to calculate the sum of a series of numbers, but hey, that's still an algorithm. Um, and this will set us up because tomorrow we're going to do a bunch more with algorithms. So let's create another public static method, but let's have this one return an int value, which will be the sum, sum, of the numbers entered by the user. So we're gonna need to create a local variable of type scanner. I'm gonna name it S. And I'll make a new scanner object that reads from the terminal. That's system.in. Um, often when we're doing an algorithm, we need um, one or more local variables to hold our intermediate values. In this case, we need a, a variable, I'm gonna call it sum, which holds the running total the sum so far, I'm gonna initialize that to zero and I'm gonna keep incrementing it by what the user types in. I also want a variable called value, which is going to keep track of the value that the user typed in. So I want to ask the user at least once to enter an integer. Um, so I'm gonna use a do while loop. And in the body of my do while loop, I'm gonna print or prompt the user hey, enter a positive integer and enter negative one to quit. So this is a common feature of terminal-based programs, right? We, we want some input from the user. We want potentially multiple inputs from the user, but we're not sure. Are they going to type in two numbers? Are they going to type in 20 numbers? So we need some way of them telling us when they're done. Um, and so we decide there's a special value. That means I'm done. And so here I'm using a special value of negative one to mean I'm done, no more numbers. This special value that stops our loop has a special name. It's called a sentinel variable or a sentinel value. Um, it's the value, for example, like negative one, used to terminate a loop. It is often, but not always, but it is often entered by a user. And we'll certainly see more examples of this tomorrow. So new term, new vocab word, new terminology there, sentinel value or sentinel variable. So I'm going to call s.nextint and assign the result of that to the local variable value. I'm going to increment sum by whatever number they type in. And then in my do while loop, I'd still need the while part. So while value is not equal to negative one, semicolon. So keep prompting the user as long as they type in another other than negative one. Once they type in negative one, we're done. 
return the sum. So type this, compile this, run it, see how it goes. And I will do so in a moment as well. All right, I'm going to type in 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then negative 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. It returns a value of 9. Ironically, I'm off by 1, just like we were talking about earlier. Why? Why is our algorithm off by 1? Absolutely. We're off by the negative one because we're adding negative one right here. Negative one is supposed to mean we're done, and we do have our while loop for that, but we still add the negative one to the sum, which kind of wrecks our algorithm, right? This, is, this commonly happens with sentinel values. We just have to be careful that when the user says they're done, we don't then do something that like wrecks the calculation we're doing, okay? So we're going to actually put an if statement around this to fix this. If value is not equal to negative one, only then do we actually add the value to the sum. And I'm gonna add a little comment here saying, this was a bug. Sum was one less than it should be before, the, before this if statement was added. Okay. So we gotta we gotta basically make sure we don't add the sentinel value to whatever calculation we're doing. Another really common pitfall. 